The next act um, was for their PhD, which they recently completed. They are now a doctor. They are now a doctor, which I find very impressive because I'm dangerously underqualified. Um, whereas my wife is a professor. So some people work long and hard to get academic credentials, whereas I just married into them. <laughs> uh, they now have their uh, PhD in evolutionary biology, so they uh, are professionally mean to fruit flies. They also have questionable choices and typefaces, but <laughs> we're all going to try. Try and get through that together. You may know them from doing science on YouTube. Can you please put your hands together for Sally LePage? <laughs> or, as I can now say, Dr. Sally LePage. <laughs> I've never had such a big reaction to that. That's great, I love it. I only finished my PhD last month, that's how recent it is. Thank you. And as for the typeface, I just wanted you to notice my Twitter handle, so I thought, it's a room full of nerds, they'll probably at least notice it if I type in Comic Sans. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, as, as Matt said, I have just finished my PhD. And strangely enough, it's quite hard to make YouTube videos when you're writing a PhD thesis. So I've taken a bit of a break from writing YouTube videos and now I've just moved to London to do it full time. And I thought, okay, it's been a while since my YouTube audience has seen me. I need a great video idea to start off again, to remind people who I am. It's got to be relatable, it's got to be funny, it's got to be interesting and visual and, and all of that. And then I procrastinate and just check my email inbox. <laughs> and I received an email with the title, Banana, five sides, but three segments. <laughs> I'm normally quite ruthless when it comes to my emails, and so normal, I'm very good at just deleting them before I've even read more than just the title. If you're sending me an email, it better be a good title. <laughs> so, um, but I saw this and I thought, okay, it's from a guy called Edward. You'll notice as well that um, this email was sent to two people. One of them was me. One of them was Matt Parker. <laughs> this guy, Edward, had no idea that this was going to turn into this. Anyway, it starts off. No hello, no dear or anything. It just starts off. I was at a pub quiz recently and was asked how many sides does a banana have? I got it wrong. Smiley face. <laughs> the answer turns out to be five. On the outside and on the inside, bananas have trilocular ovaries. Uh, each ovary, aka fruit, has three locules. I didn't know the word locule until I found this page, bananas.org slash banana science. <laughs> Thanks, Edward, for assuming that of your two recipients, maybe at least one out of the biologist and mathematician wouldn't know what a locule was. And um, so then, it, but the question I'm hoping you might have an answer for is. How do the three sides of the fruit line up with the five sides on the outside? Is it always the same orientation inside in relation to the outside? Does it vary in different varieties? Why are the two sides on the outside missing on the inside? Or why isn't there a sixth outside side? I mean, Edward, that's more than one question. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the world is treating you both well. Edward, smiley face. So we know that Edward's a nice guy. And, uh, and so I thought, okay, strange email from a random person that I've never met. Probably just ignore it like I ignore all the other fan mail. And um, <laughs> so much, no, I don't. Uh, and uh, then I just kind of kept thinking about it. And every time I saw a banana, I was thinking about it. I'm just going to choose to ignore it. <laughs> In my rules, if it doesn't smash, you don't do the clinky thing, okay? <laughs> um, but he's right. Bananas do have three locules on the inside. So if only I had a banana to show you. Unfortunately, I got these all wrong way. <laughs> well, sir. <laughs> this is the fruit, this is the uh, flower scar, so this is where the flower will attach to it. And on a ripe banana, you can squeeze the flower scar and peel it like this. However, this is not a ripe banana, and uh, basically, I always try with the stem first, and then if it fails, then you go for the flower scar, because otherwise you get that, you know that weird black bit at the bottom of the banana? You get that all over your thumb if you do it the other way. I mean, what kind of psychopath baby are you? <laughs> 
Anyway, this works so much better with ripe bananas, but unfortunately I just get what Sainsbury's gives me. So if you were to take, a, this isn't gonna work. If you were to take a, yes it is, a ripe banana and just push your finger down the middle, you'll see it splits. <laughs> You're never gonna eat a banana in the same way. I recognise the sound as someone's like, the next time I eat a banana in front of a friend, I'm gonna blow their banana mind. Anyway, the the, uh, the flower has three parts to the ovary, and that's why all bananas have three parts to the inside. When I'm talking about bananas, by the way, oh, would you like a banana? <laughs> I'll wash my hands before the talk. Here you go. <laughs> she was too nice to refuse. Um, <laughs> oh, she is eating it. <laughs> it's, not right. it's not right. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and so um, when I talk about bananas, I'm talking about Cavendish bananas, as I'm sure most of you in this audience, because of who you are, know that all bananas are clones of each other. They are genetically identical. Uh, we use currently the variety of the Cavendish, other varieties have been popular in the past, and it was a different variety in the past that is what they inspired banana flavour from. So if ever you had banana flavour medicine or sweets, like this doesn't taste like a banana, it's because it tastes exactly like the banana that used to be in vogue, but then got wiped out and the Cavendish tastes nothing like it anyway. I mean, I was told this was for unnecessary detail, but I have so many banana facts. <laughs> so, um, for those of you that don't know biology, <laughs> Don't cheer your lack of knowledge. Come on. This is what a banana tree looks like. Strictly speaking, it's not a tree, it's a herb. Let's skip over that quickly because I don't have the time. Um, so bananas grow on trees, mind blown. Um, and uh, this is what the flowers look like. So on the left, you've got uh, the male flowers, on the right, you've got the female flowers. Some plants have different male and female flowers. And uh, you'll see that you've got all the pollen on the left. All the stigmas on the right, and then it grows into little bananas. And then this, if you thought your mind was going before, is how bananas grow. Bananas do not grow like this. They grow like this. <laughs> Some of you are just like, yeah, others are what? What is she talking? Of course they grow, don't they grow like this? Anyway, so this is the biology of the banana, and I was thinking, you know, well, all bananas are identical, so, but why would there be five? I mean, he's right, Edward, smiley face. Um, three is the number of the banana. Most plants have like a number of their radial symmetry, so like a lot of flowers will have five, bananas have three, so you'd expect it to be a multiple of three. And so I decided to go into Tesco, stand by the banana section, and start counting the number of sides on a banana. Um, <laughs> And uh, if you're wondering what I'm actually talking about when I say sides on a banana, this is where a Madonna mic would have been really handy. You'll notice that especially on unripe bananas, it's less prominent as the banana gets riper, the, thin, uh, the skin gets thinner. Uh, there are definite ridges that run all the way from the end to the scar. Thank you, Heckler in the audience, for already allowing me to introduce the concept of a flower scar. Um, and this one here has got one, two, three, four sides. That was really lucky, I was expecting it to have five. Um, and so I thought, okay, what I need to do is just count all the bananas. Okay, so this one has got one, two, one, two, three, three, four sides. So how I'm counting a side is the ridge that runs all the way from the stem to the scar. So here you go, have a banana. You can remember that one as four. Um, bear with me. One, I'm going to count that as two, but it's a little bit questionable. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> catchy in the front row. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. You've already got a banana, don't worry. You can, you can release the pressure. One, two, three, four, five. Catch! <laughs> I should have expected great at knowledge of fonts and size, not so good at the hand-eye coordination. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, go long. <laughs> that guy's showing off. One, two, three, four, five. 
Um, one, two, three, four, five. I love how you guys are just so patient with all this. Um, <laughs> if you think that's good, well, get ready to catch everyone. You get a banana, and you get a banana, and you get a banana, and everybody gets bananas. You get a banana, and you get a banana, and everybody gets bananas. Anyway, when you've got your banana, and yes, there is enough for one each, I want you to get your phones out and go to bit.ly oh, slash my banana has. If you're old school and you want to use a QR code, because I still wish that QR codes will take off because it's so cool, you can use that code, it'll take you to the same place. bit.ly slash my banana has. And tell me how many sides your banana has. And your time's up. By the way, when I was making this form, I obviously you can see I did it on Google. Yes, you can have a Google form title with emojis. And uh, you'll notice those of you on the front row may be able to see, those of you on the back row may not. But Google says suggest a correct answer five sides. They do not have the data for that. And I know because I searched all over Google and using my PhD skills all over Google Scholar as well. <laughs> and there is no published data on how many sides a banana has. And yet, it is this pub trivia thing where if you look, it gets, okay, a banana has five sides. Like, why? It just does. Well, that's not good enough. And so, the moment you've been waiting for, your results. But first, <laughs> of course you don't do look at your results first, you come up with a hypothesis. And so I think, so okay, most of the bananas I've seen have got five sides, but why? That doesn't make sense. And then remember this picture I showed you before? If you look at it, the bananas are growing in two rows. Okay, so maybe it's something to do with their neighbours, and they have a fixed number of neighbours, and it's kind of where they touch, they get squished, and it forms these ridges. And uh, this, some maths for Matt, uh, is a Voronoi pattern. So as you can see, things are spreading from points and then where they touch, it forms an edge. Someone's mind has just been blown. <laughs> okay, but for this to work, we would need, for some reason, bananas, which are genetically identical, remember, so there's no genetic variation involved, it's entire environmental variation. We would need each banana to have, on average, four neighbors. So then I went searching again. I went to the Kew Bulletin from 1953. I rang up Kew Gardens. Firstly, I said, excuse me, your banana plants and flower. They said, how on earth am I supposed to know that? Uh, turns out they weren't. And, um, and then I said, can I use this as my talk? And they said, are you that strange banana girl that phoned up earlier? <laughs> anyway, figure one is very enlightening. This, someone has drawn how the flower buds, remember I showed you the female flowers before? So there was a point to everything. Uh, so this is how the female flower buds grow in those lines. And you can see there are definitely two rows and they form this kind of zigzag. And luckily, this guy on the internet has made a website where you can draw on those points and see what the Voronoi diagram looks like. So I replicated figure one in this thing. And let's do a bit of counting. Oh yeah. You'll notice that all of these have five sides, but some of them don't. <gasps> and so this is a hand with 16 bananas in it. One of those things is called a hand, if you didn't know. And um, on average, Cavendish bananas have between 10 and 20. So if we assume that 16 is about average, we can plot this on a graph. 
This is how many banana, sides a banana should have. And this would give us a mean of 4.625, which you will note is not five. Okay, so this is where I get to really show off. <laughs> got some R code. Ooh. I bloody hate R, but hey, it looks the closest thing to coding that I can do. It's the only coding language I kind of half know how to Google. So, <laughs> what I can do, and I really, really hope this works. Well, firstly, you can't see the error messages that I'm getting on screen right now. I was asked, do you want to have this a two-part thing so you can sort out the stats while someone else does a gig thing? Um, <laughs> this is what being a scientist looks like. <laughs> Just distract for a little bit while you do it. I mean, there is, of course, an option. You can come back before the... Uh, final act of the night. Or um, Simon could just do some dancing. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is hanging, guys. I just had to split, sorry. Whoa! <laughs> no high five sides for you. We have got four sides. I'm very pleased to find that me and Simon are the outliers. I'm just going to return my costume. Banana song. Banana song. I, um, I, if you want the banana song, I'm sorry. <laughs> Funny, I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I choose to um, are you, are you I, might, I might need a bit okay. of time. Um, uh, for those of you who requested the, the banana song, uh, of course you can have the banana song if you buy our DVD. Uh, you can't watch it <laughs> or download it, it's on the internet. Just look for it, guys. If you can't find it on the internet, you don't watch it. Um, uh, so you're going to come back at the beginning of the third third with some data. With actual data. Um, please, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone of our audience, please give a huge round of applause and flop your banana um, skin. Well, that answers that. Uh, <laughs> I got that email, and I, saw, I was like, this is interesting. Uh, to me and Sally. And then I was like, well, she's performing an SO detail. And then like two days later, I got an email from Helen saying, Sally says she's doing something about a banana and you know what it is? And I'm like, excellent, we're on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Voronoi patterns are amazing, by the way. Definitely uh, looking up. I can see uh, it's fantastic now that uh, it's Dr. The Page. You are able to go on to Google Scholar, find there's no good animations of the noise patterns, and use the default one from the Wikipedia article. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say that entirely in jest because I've used it in one of my videos? There you go. Uh, Wiki Commons. So exciting. No, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, so the best way to open a banana is just uh, brute force. <laughs> on to the next act and then uh, we will get some uh, stats back at we'll see how we're doing at the end of this third you are so optimistic you're so optimistic i was like i don't mind i can sit there i can do some quiet selling for you in the corner sally i will be actually quite happy you're like no i've got our code and i went it's not real code uh, so, I'm genuinely envious of people who can use R. I have no idea. I look at it and go, why do you hate me? Uh, so, uh, so anyway, yes, yeah, so we're going to crunch that and then we will get the stats up on the screen. It'll be good to have a definitive answer for that. So, Sally, success? Yes. 
Oh my goodness. So much success. You're very excited. <laughs> and going on about how you finished your PhD is suddenly a lot more inappropriate now. Uh, we'll, bring, we'll bring you, was it easy? Uh, we'll bring you up. Uh, do you want to plug it in? And we see see the plot. So, so you managed to get R to take everything that people have put into the form yeah. and do a bar chart. Do a histogram. A histogram. <laughs> well, I stand briefly corrected. Oh, yes. So, turns out I made one fundamental flaw, and that was explaining things to you all. If you put in a form one side means it's a perfectly round banana, your response in the column that you're expecting only numbers yeah. <laughs> is one perfectly round banana. <laughs> I tested this for eight, and so what used to say eight plus now just says eight. I had to just, luckily there were only a few ones. Anyway, I went through, and this is going to blow your mind. So as a reminder, this is what I was predicting. So a quarter, so uh, an eighth that we're going to have three sides, an eighth that we're going to have four sides, and three quarters that we're going to have five sides. Are you ready to see what your data looks like? Because I was so excited when I saw this, because genuinely I didn't actually know how this bit was going to end. I didn't think it was going to be an R code issues. I thought it was going to be, oh no, this looks nothing like what I just hyped it up to be. But look at this! There we go! Although this is not normal data, as literally mathematically it's not normal, because the sample size is large enough, I can still do a t-test on it. And so if this number is bigger than 0.05, it means that my two means are the same, i.e. my hypothesis was probably correct. That's not actually what it means, but hey, let's go with it. I've already used up all of my time. I'm standing up to make an emphatic point. If ever you are asked about the quiz, how many sides does the banana have? The answer is actually 4.625 and not 5. Thank you very much. There you are, you have now learned that unlike by the Santa Pop quiz, bananas do not have five sides. They actually have five sides <laughs> rounded to the nearest whole number of sides. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming along to an evening on this detail. We hugely appreciate that you're here. You're very well behaved, and no one is going to sue because of banana-related injuries. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, it's Sally LePage. There you are. Okay. Uh, so she had a, uh, before because she used to do a channel called Shed Science, but then she moved too far away from the shed, and you know, once you, you can never get a replacement shed. You're moving to London, you can't afford a shed. No. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, to, I was like, oh, so, so now, you, now you're back, now you're doing your PhD, you're back, what are you calling your channel? She's like, I'm just a cellular page on everything. So, cellular page on Twitter, cellular page on Instagram, Instagram cellular page on YouTube, cellular page on uh, legal forms. So, <laughs> if any banana shaped bruising comes up, there you are.